Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Emerald Dreadnoughts. Today we're continuing a scenario series that was done by Darth Vendar. The brief synopsis is that the full might of Austria-Hungary now faces off against the French Mediterranean fleet. Now, linked down below in the description are the previous parts to this little series, and that way you can see what happened previously, which does impact the sort of ships that I have today. Well done, Admiral. With the complete destruction of the Soviet Black Sea Fleet, we are one step closer to complete naval dominance in this war. Regroup with the rest of the fleet in the Mediterranean and take command of the newly revamped Mikolos Horty and destroy the French Mediterranean Fleet. After the defeat of the Japanese blockade, the German Kaiser graciously provided German engineers and funds to, up to upgrade the Miklos Horthy to be nearly on par with the Bismarck and Tirpitz. While some sacrifices needed to be made, the ship is the pride of the Austro-Hungarian Navy. You will lead its refit into battle and destroy the French fleet with superior Austro-Hungarian designs and tactics. You can decide how much of the fleet you wish to bring into this engagement. What I have at my disposal is a battle cruiser, 15 heavy cruisers, 10 light cruisers and 10 destroyers. The enemy, as you can see on the screen, will have 3 battle cruisers, 8 heavy cruisers, 10 light cruisers and 10 destroyers. That's a lot of stuff to kill. This is probably going to be a long drawn out battle. Now, um, I can bring at least one battle cruiser and I have to. The battle cruisers on the French side have to be destroyed. Destroy the French battle cruisers and decimate the French Mediterranean fleet. Now, decimate, uh, it's a subjective term. Uh, it doesn't say completely destroy. It doesn't say uh, you need to kill this many ships. So I'm going to sort of go by feel and say that if I can go with, let's say, eight kills on light cruisers and eight kills on destroyers, maybe just wipe out the heavy cruisers altogether, that that would suffice as a victory. You will not be able to replenish your losses as your next battle will see you face the French Atlantic Fleet and finally the Russian Baltic Fleet. If you lose the Miklos Horty, you will have to recreate the heavy cruiser design from part one. Now, there are a ton of restrictions on the design for the battle cruiser, but for now, I first need to pick what sort of ships I want on my side. It's tricky, because I have no impact on any of their designs. And if I lose these, they will not be with me for the next part of the battle. That's quite the design, or the, quite the consideration. I'm going to go with 8 out of my 15 heavy cruisers. I'm going to go with 5 light cruisers and 5 destroyers. That way, if I lose everything, I still have 7 heavy cruisers, 5 light cruisers and 5 destroyers in the, let's say, National Reserve. And I can use those against whatever comes next. Now, let me check if the French era is actually 1940 or less. Yeah, French or 1935. There we go. Okay, let's get to designing and just go through this laundry list of restrictions. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll see about that. Okay. Um, Miklos Horty design constraints. This is a battle cruiser turned battleship with German engineers making it equivalent to the Bismarck and sparing no expense. It needs to have an ABC XYZ turret configuration with four double 15s and two double 9 inch turrets. Right. Um, maximum displacement 47. No, displacement of 47,000 tons. So that's the entirety of it. Minimum speed, 30 knots. If I can speed up later, great. If not, tough. I'd rather have more armor at that range, or at that state probably. Range, medium. Bulkheads must be many at least, and probably more. No compact secondary tower. Light secondary tower and modern secondary tower are okay. Minimum armor layout. Let's get to that. Uh, belt, 12.6. We need to have belt extended of 6 inch. Now he says actual. Uh, in actual thickness. So I'm not sure if this is with or without the armor quality. Because this is a ton to have on a, a battle cruiser. It might work. I don't know. We'll see. And otherwise I'm going to have to do a bit of calculations. And make it a bit more viable. Uh, turret armor 14.2. 14.2. And conning tower 
This thing is indeed a beast made of steel. Turret top, 5.9 inches. And secondaries, 6 inches. Okay, let's improve the armor quality, and that also reduces the weight. Now, it is a battle cruiser. Um, I'm going to benefit from having more speed, and that means better turbines. Oil, induced boilers. Let's go with a better auxiliary engine. This thing's probably going to turn like a brick. Um, we'll see what we can do. Anti-torp, some of it. Actually, more of it, probably, considering the turning circle. Anti-flood, all of it. Citadel, turtleback, reinforced bulkheads. And now we're going to start adding stuff to the ship. How exactly we're going to make this whole thing fit, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Light secondary tower was okay. See, the problem is I cannot really shift this thing farther back. I have to work within these constraints. And that means that putting a, a 9-inch main gun... That's going to be tricky. I wonder if that fits on there. Like a 9-inch dual. It might. It might. Yeah, it does. Okay, so then we can also have a standard. I just hope that that 15-inch turret isn't too big. It's a 15-inch dual. We're going to have to have at least one here. And then this one gets forward. You go over there. Whoops. Sit. Okay, and we kind of completely copy that design to the back. To the stern. Turret over there. Copy the barbettes to about there. Turret to here and the other turret to there. I think this is one of the more reasonable designs that I've created lately. Funnel capacity at 30 knots probably doesn't need to be that much. 88.3 already. That's with a mega funnel 3 and 30 knots. Oh, it could be a lot worse. Now, there's still a lot that needs to be upgraded, though. Range finding, radar, um, loading system, hydraulic system, propellant. I'm going to go for a safe high TNT. Super heavy shells. Not valid. Empty barbettes. I think I know which one you're talking about. Are you complaining about these? No, you're not. Which one then? What other barbette is there? That's it. <laughs> really? Yes. Okay, so that has to have a barbette for... Or the, the, has to have a turret for some reason? Sure, I guess. Um, first, though, I want to have an increased complement of shells to make sure that I can engage everything. And not run out of ammo. For weight of set is still pretty heavy. Now it's aft. There we go. 0.4. Right. About 400 tons remain for any kind of secondary armament. That's not a lot. That is not a lot at all. Considering that I don't have anything that can deal with the destroyer short of these two inch guns. Which would mean that I would have to rely heavily, very, very heavily on my escorts. That's something I generally don't like to do because I don't know what sort of ship the AI is going to design for me. And because I don't know that, I cannot rely on it. Yeah. This one battle cruiser is going to have to take on three others. Which could be as bad as having 19-inch guns. Um, if we go for 4-inch guns, we can engage stuff at about 10 kilometers out. I think that'll be... Well, it might not be sufficient, but it will have to be sufficient. You'd think that you could also fit one over there if you don't use a funnel, but apparently not. Poor field of fire. Like what? Oh, those things. Okay, what if I put them over there? Is that better? That's better. 
We're going to put these things a bit closer to the edge of the ship. That way, hopefully giving them more turning circle. Add a few more there. Or actually, no, though they might not turn. Lately, I've had a few too many incidents where turrets just refused to turn. And thereby kind of impeding my ship. Uh, a little bit of tonnage left, 17 tons. That means that if I can put two of these on... Yep, there were two tons away from full displacement. Two tons. That means that I cannot put any further guns on it. I cannot upgrade anything more. I guess this is it. Beast made of steel. Uh, we're going to call this the Bismarck wannabe. The Bismarck wannabe. Okay, Bismarck wannabe. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to sink on the French side. Better get to it. Okay, here we go. This is going to be the final lineup. One battle cruiser, eight heavies, five lights, and five destroyers. Against basically, well, double the number of the light cruisers, double the number of DDs, triple the number of battle cruisers, and even on heavies. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. We got. Oh, actually, this thing should be called the, um, the Miklos Horti. Not the Bismarck wannabe, I'm sorry. Heavy cruisers, report. Maximum bulkheads, yay. Excellent. 7-inch guns, M meh. Torpedo launchers, yay. 24-inch. Ooh. Promising. Torpedo visibility, plus 23%. Meh. Hmm. Could be good as brawlers. Problem is, they cannot get into range to brawl because they only do 24 knots. Armor... 8-inch for a heavy cruiser is really good. Really good. I have a bit more. 12-inch. But still. Okay, what do we else have? Uh, the light cruisers. Turnitz, Stor, Schwitschat, Funsberg. Many bulkheads. Good start. 7-inch guns. Nice. Torpedoes. 21-inch. Visibility pretty high. Okay, not a whole lot of those. TDs. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of these Lika DDs. Seems to be the only name that they use. Minimum bulkheads. Oh, crap. Torpedo launchers. 10... <laughs> Lovely. 10 kilometer range on your torpedoes on a DD that cannot take a hit. Because if it does take a hit, it will flood. 39 knots, so at least they're quick. Uh, they have 4 inch guns. This is going to translate into my light cruisers and heavy cruisers are going to have to take out all destroyers. Like all of them, because I cannot rely on my destroyers to do it. And my battle cruisers, battle cruiser singular, might rely to some extent on the heavy cruisers for assistance in dealing with the big ships. So the heavy cruisers are going to have a busy, busy, busy day. Now, I think I need to reorient my fleet reorganize it because as it happens to be now this is not gonna work so we're gonna detach these guys and this is again something that I would very much like to see changed right, you are div 9 you can join div oh 8 join div 8 you can then join div 8 again and you can also join div 8 there. This way we're going to have Div 8, Steady Course, Spalato, Villach, uh, Miskolch, and Kampfen or Kampfenberg. And then the last heavy cruiser, Tyrol, join Div 8. Div 8, your orders. Follow the battle cruiser. Then we have the light cruisers in all sorts of... Oh, there's another one. Wait... Oh, right, because I didn't go with five heavy cruisers. I went with eight. Okay, in that case, I don't want more than four per div. So these four, you're going to have your own division. So that's you detaching. Uh, Feldkirch. Join the Kaiser, so that's... Yeah, okay, that's not too bad. You can join div two. Which happens to be Div 3. I don't get it. Whatever. Uh, you can join Div 3. 
I want nobody torpedoing anything unless otherwise directed. So you're going to move that way. For some reason it's under the command of the Debrechen, or whatever. We have to move to the north, so we're going to have to turn around. And then we have the light cruisers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There. Standard formation. No screening bullshit. Just go that way. No loose formation. Go that way. Battle cruiser. Turn that way. Okay, turn to find the enemy. Wherever she may be. Because this battle started out at 38,000 yards. Or 38,000 meters. Which is a hell of a long way away for a battle to start. But it might... Oh, I've already been detected. It might just give me an opportunity to form up my ships. And hopefully thereby get a bit of a battle formation going before we encounter the enemy. Seems, however, like that is no longer an option. We've got the heavies lined up here. These four. We've got the DDs lined up there. The heavy, 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 heavy. Yeah, okay, good. So we've been spotted. Wow. Okay. They're about 23 kilometers out. 28. Gave me a rate of return. Hmm. I have 1,080 shells in the Bismarck wannabe. Contact with a battle cruiser. Triple 12 inch guns? That's it? That's excellent. For me. <clears throat> Not for them, for me. Because those are gonna have. Sorry about that. Those are gonna have all sorts of trouble penning my ship. At least, I hope so. There are, however, a lot of those. Wait, torpedoes? No, ships. Heavy cruiser class, I suppose. Uh, we got eight eight-inch guns here. Torpedo launchers on the stern and the bow. Great, torpedo fiesta. How good are these ships at detecting torps? Because I know that the Bismarck's not good. Uh, sonar 3. You. I like you. Stick with the heavy cruiser. Oh, sorry. Stick with the battle cruiser. You guys that way. DD's that way. Sonar 2. I guess I'm going to lose some destroyers here. So be it. And the light cruisers. Sonar 3 as well. Good. Good. Turn to port a bit more. We're going to open up and see if we can do some damage against their battle cruiser. Thank you for the screenshot there. See, ideally I would turn off my 9-inch guns until I hit heavy cruisers. But I don't think that that's quite going to work out. Although, no, actually. Look at this. You got the 15s pointing one way, and the 9 is pointing in a different way. The 9-inch gun goes for bow and stern, is picking a different target. That's neat. That's really neat. Keep doing that. Yep, definitely hitting two different targets. Assumedly, this destroyer here. That's... Ooh, getting a hit as well. Uh, eight five-inch guns. Torpedoes? Yeah, there. Port and starboard. Just two tubes. Hold on. Are you hiding something? Yes, you are. Look at that. Sneaky, sneaky. They have another triple torpedo launcher. Right there. Next to the depth charges. They thought they were being sneaky, but I see that. I see what you're up to. Uh, partial pen on the Bismarck wannabe. By a 12-inch gun. I want to see how much flooding I inflict here. A lot. Low bulkheads. That's excellent. Okay, then. My dear heavy cruisers. You guys should... Either you are, or you're getting close to range with your torps. 15-3. 
DD's that way. We're taking a good chunk out of one of their ships. 377 damage. And it promptly went undetected. Alright. Um, you had 14.8. Okay. Plan. I have the group of the Spalato follow the Bismarck. That way I at least get some sort of sonar detection system closer to my battle cruiser, which is really my main instrument of dealing damage. The other heavy cruiser group and the destroyers are going to make it over to this side, which is the north. The light cruiser is going to approach from, let's say, an easterly direction. And that way I hope to do a cross torp on them. If that works, I'll be able to inflict quite a bit of damage, or at least make all sorts of ships turn around. And thereby rendering them temporarily useless. Because they won't be able to inflict damage as they're probably turning faster than their turrets are. Jesus Christ. What happened to you? I think it's my battle cruiser that happened to you, but... Holy... And I think also that these guys were all piled onto each other. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna remember that in the morning. If there is gonna be another morning, which, well... Doubtful. Very, very doubtful. Looks like the ship is about to roll over at this rate. Heavily flooded on the starboard side. And it seems like uh, my heavy cruiser is not even the focal point anymore. It's the destroyer. Yep, I sunk what I suspect is a heavy cruiser. Because their battle cruisers all seem pretty healthy. Uh, next target. Actually, you guys figure out your next target. Just work it over yourself. Because that way, I probably split the firepower between... A target that the 9-inch gun can work with and something that the 15s can work with. Range was 15 something. Yeah, 15-3. Commence torpedo action. Because this guy is blundering into range and if those torps run long there's all sorts of other stuff that coming up behind it. I want the Tyrol to hit that. Feldkirch, that one. Kaiser Karl, that one. D4, enable. Let's group the Debrechen. Oh crap, I'm giving orders to the wrong group. Uh, Spalato. That one. Villach. That one. Ooh, there might not be a ship more. Uh, there and there. What are you guys doing? You're not following diff. No, 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 you're not. What the hell? One of these guys is set to screen. No. No, absolutely not. Okay, good. So far, we've inflicted 2.2 thousand damage in trade for 132. I think that's a good trade. And I think it's the destroyer that is currently absorbing a lot of fire. Which is good, because it's by far what I have to offer, the most difficult target to hit. So keep it up. Bismarck Wannabe is engaging a heavy cruiser. But not the 9-inch guns. The 9-inch guns have decided to go for a light cruiser. The light cruiser has few bulkheads. The heavy cruiser has standard complement of bulkheads. Torpedoes ranging 12-9. Terrible visibility on those. I don't like that one bit. Because that means that those can sneak up on me. And if they do, then I don't have anything against them. <laughs> the Guichon over here is taking a ton of fire. Look at that. So much incoming fire here. I'm just waiting for this thing to get penned and flooded. So once this thing starts flooding, it's hard to stop. I 
think the Bismarck's being targeted. And the destroyer is taking the brunt of it. Let's pull you guys back a bit. Because you're drawing a bit too much fire at this point. Ah, you guys have started launching torpedoes. Excellent. You're torpedoing the heavy cruiser, yes. You're torpedoing another heavy cruiser, and you're also torpedoing, but you haven't launched yet. What we got here? Are you running away? It's a destroyer and another destroyer. Ah, there goes the cold bear. Info. And the Guichon. Very good. So, what happened to the Colbert? Huh. I would think that some sort of ammo explosion would have happened. Because that's usually the quickest way to put something in f on fire entirely. But it's a 15 inch shell. Maybe the game automatically selected high explosive for the Bismarck as it was engaging the heavy cruiser. And because of that damage, because of that shell type, the whole ship erupted into flame. That's my working suspicion here, my working theory. There we go. Hit on the main tower. Anyway, I was trying to address the light cruisers to try and intercept the DDs over there. Although, at 23 knots, well, I'm kind of hesitant about their ability to catch them. Also, it's nice that I'm nailing heavy cruisers here, but the real threats, the battle cruisers, are moving away. We have full ID, many bulkheads. They're trying to hit a destroyer? <laughs> of all the targets. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Don't interrupt the enemy as they're making a mistake. How's our torpedo screen? Where are the heavies? Here. But the Spalato launched a while ago. Still, I would expect to see those torps here. So there they are. Somewhere. Not likely to hit anything. Unless they run really, really long. In which case they might eventually end up in the same area as where the, the Tigre happens to be. But I kind of doubt it. These DDs can do 37.5 knots. <laughs> it's 50% faster than my light cruisers. Don't bother. You're not going to catch him. Hmm... Right now, I'm actually happy trading fire with these guys. Even though my pen chance is pretty bad. I'm a bit hesitant about constantly firing my 15-inch guns against heavy cruisers, though. Because while it works, it also wastes a lot of ammo that I will need to deal with the heavy... with the, the, the battle cruisers that they have. Heavy cruisers, what's your chance to deal with the light? Far better. Spalato group, target the Jean Bart. The Bretchen, target the Jean Bart. Your whole div. Light cruisers are turning. Jean Bart suddenly starts taking a ton of damage. I'm kind of keeping the DDs in reserve right now because I don't feel like I need them at the moment. They're too fragile for what I need them to do, and there's too much that can very quickly just eradicate them altogether. Ooh, we do not carry a lot of reloads here. Do not torp. Flooding. That's what I was looking for. One issue. I'm sailing around here without a torpedo screen. Like, I cannot spot torps. That kind of worries me. We'll just have to keep an eye on what these ships are up to. 
The moment that I see that they launch, I need to turn. This guy, for example. No secondaries in the form of torpedoes. Okay. Excellent news. Uh, target the Enfernet. Target the, uh, was that the Cosmo? Yeah. Damage and flooding on the Grand Saint Louis. This is an excellent performing battle cruiser. Really well done. Flooding on the French light cruiser. Flooding intensifies. Again. That thing is gone. Where are the other battle cruisers at? Here. This is where you can insert your French running away jokes because it seems like that's exactly what they're doing. They're just moving off. At least that battle cruiser is. Uh, the Grand Saint Louis might be trying to do that too. There goes the light cruiser. And this is kind of where we run into trouble with the speed on my battle cruiser. Because my ship will not do very well in trying to catch up. It doesn't have the speed to do it. Ooh. Marseillaise is going to be flooding. That was one 15 inch pen. Are these Mark 5s? Mark 4. Okay. Damage done. 8,500. Damage taken. 400. That's a really, really good ratio. Ooh, the Clemenceau is coming in. Target the Clemenceau. Don't waste any time trying to hit heavy cruisers. I know you can do it. You've proven that much. But hit this battle cruiser. Wreck it while it's in range. Because these French guys are fast. Damage to the funnel. Okay. It's not necessarily critical. 710 shells remain. 702. No hits on the Clemenceau. They're firing all the 12 inch at the battle cruiser, but I don't think they can do much. Well, I would be wrong. They have a 49% chance to pen. That is really substantial. They just don't do as much damage. And they're starting to flood. We're going to turn some more to port, risking more damage from the Clemenceau, but also opening up the, uh, the X and the Y turret. And hopefully getting rid of that ship even faster. We also got the Epervier over here. Torpedo range 12. That does put her into torpedo range, but right now she's not doing it. And that persists. Perfect. We're going to start pushing with one of the heavy cruiser groups. Oh crap, there's two of you. Third one is still way, way away, right? Oh yeah, way away. Not a threat. All ships seem to be fine. Okay, can you get rid of the Clement so quickly? Because there's another battle cruiser demanding your attention. Scorch marks here and there on the ship, but overall, the armor's holding. No turrets have popped off yet. Concern is ammo. Accuracy is phenomenal. We're just wrecking this guy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Something ran out of ammo for torpedo tubes. Rochambeau. What are you trying to torp? Oh, shit. My DD's got into torpedo range of something. The heavy cruiser, at least. Target that. Give me the whole div. Uh, target the... What is that? Guidon. Target the Marseillaise. And you also target the Marseillaise, even though she's heavily damaged. 
torp when available. Torpedo launchers on the stern. Should have an unlimited field of fire. Aggressive launch. Considering your survivability, I might not get more than one shot. Clemenceau is pretty much done for. She's having trouble keeping her head above water. I don't mind sacrificing a few hit points on the Bismarck wannabe to deal with the uh, battle cruiser here. Because if these go down, then that means that the heavy cruisers have a far easier field day trying to push in there. There we go. Next target. The Grand Saint-Louis. Which has a 43-44% chance to pen me. In reverse, I'm looking at 73%. I am running out of the 8-inch guns, however. 8-inch shells. We're going to target the destroyers. Flooding on the Grand Saint-Louis. That was fast. Flash fire on the... Uh, La La Laudacieux. Laudacieux. Audacious, if I'm not mistaken. Crap, the Guidon ran out of torpedo ammo, so you launched again, huh? Fortunately, the DDs are all turning tail. Unfortunately, without launching their torpedoes. Fine. The real battle is happening here. I don't care much about those few destroyers. <laughs> this thing is getting ripped to shreds. Ooh. <laughs> it's going to make for an interesting thumbnail. <laughs> nice that I caught that, because that's the sinking battle cruiser right there. Holy. Look at how low that stern is. Which is interesting, because the flooding occurred mostly bow slash amidships. So just imagine that you kind of survived the sinking of the battle cruiser, and then the Grand Saint Louis just runs you over. My day is ruined. What did you torp? A heavy cruiser. I got quite a few to pick from. Turn in. Hussar also torpedoed me. There's the torpedo. Right there. One, two. Should be okay. Not so much for the battle cruiser and not so much for the destroyer. Okay, so that's two out of the three battle cruisers dead, and mine barely took a scratch. 88% structural remaining. Hold on, I'm gonna have to do some divine intervention here. Um you. Detach. Because if you do not detach, you're gonna run your ass right into a torpedo. Anybody else at risk? No, we're fine. Okay, rejoin. Oh! Shit. There were more torpedoes out there. Fortunately, they're pretty resilient, these heavy cruisers. Lacté dies. What are you targeting? Like a heavy cruiser on the other side of the map? Yeah, he's not even kidding. He's targeting something 32 kilometers away. W why? <laughs> There's so much stuff closer. Just cease fire on the mains, if you will. We're going to go with the 4-inch guns to deal with the destroyers. And once we get closer to the enemy, I'm okay with engaging with bigger stuff. But for now, we're going to go with smaller stuff. 4-inch guns are fine. Change direction. Because I think you just tried to torpedo the Bismarck wannabe. My battle cruisers. We're going to speed up and move out. Kaiser Carl is now leading this group. I'm going to pull this ship off the line and retreat her. 
Because if I can keep her alive, she can come in again in the next battle. If she dies, not so much. Jeez, your destroyers really cannot take a hit, can they? Well, more so than mine. Truth be told. Target the La Perouse. 30% pen? What? Oh. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> That's another way to pen the Laperouse. <laughs> Seven inch guns can do it. A 24 inch torpedo will. <laughs> what are you doing out here, little one? Oh, I think you're... Yeah, you're, you're a victim of the formation bug. Well, once they spot torpedoes, they're gonna wake right up. Right about now. There we go. Oh shit, torpedoes in the water. Move! <laughs> <laughs> and it scoots off. Perfect. Okay, that DD's gone. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to turn a bit more. Trust nobody. Especially not torpedoes that you can't see. Damage done, 19,000. Damage taken, 2.5k. Perfect. DD status... Still operating about 20, 21 kilometers away from the fleet. Do we know where the battle cruiser is? No idea. No idea. Sonar 3. Turning circle 383. I won't turn that thing into a scrap heap using torpedoes because they'll just outturn me. They'll spot the torps and they'll outturn me, especially with fast torpedoes at 10 kilometers. I won't make it into range. Now I hate to say it, but the French are running away. Overall the French are a pretty formidable fighting force, but like the rest of the scenarios, the AI is very keen on not fighting. How are the light cruisers doing anyway? How much is my battle cruiser done? My battle cruiser has done 12,000 out of the 30. That is a productive ship. What? You actually hit a cruiser? Okay. You actually did kill the La Perouse using a torpedo launcher. Or using a torpedo. Impressive. I'll take it. Impressive. Uh, ceasefire. How much effort do I want to dick? Uh, do I want to spend on catching the stationary DD? Judging by the smoke. You'd argue that it's running in reverse. Hmm. 16 kilometer range. I can engage at 10. Nah, I can road kill it. Why not? Not literally. I won't drive over it. But I will get closer and just let the 4 inch guns do some work. See if they launch torpedoes. And when they do, turn away. So, if I'm not mistaken, so far I have only lost one destroyer. And they're already down two battle cruisers, uh, several destroyers, several heavy cruisers, and a few lights. And they're all running. Don't make me chase you to the edge of the world. I would really hate to do that. Oh, we just torped. Cool. Now get out. Oh, the battle cruiser's out here somewhere. Saw shells coming in from over here. Look at this. Rochambeau detects. Turns hard to port. Torpedoes are all the way over there. That's about three, probably three and a half kilometers away when they actually detected them. 12 inch guns hitting the destroyer. It's the battle cruiser that's doing damage. Definitely. Definitely. Oh well.
My heavy cruisers are good. They're good ships. I like them. They just don't get anywhere. Like, they just... They sail around at 24 knots. They're tanky. I'll grant you that. Now they're torpedoed the battle cruiser. They're, they're very tanky, but that's the only thing that they have going for them. Because they don't do anything else. Well, they... Mm, how should I put this? I like their, their defense. Armor is good. Torpedo launchers are alright, although a little easy to spot. And the problem with them is that they just don't have the firepower nor the speed to use that firepower properly. And that makes them a little bit less useful. This is getting a bit too busy. Let's get out of here. At least we know where the rest of the fleet is. If only we had the torpedoes to do something about it. Hold on, I thought you were gone. Or gone enough, anyway. Boutefeu. Not really. You torped again? Mais non. We're going to turn and make sure that that doesn't actually impact the battle cruiser. Because I do have some torpedo protection, but I'd rather not get hit at all. Even if they're only 19 inch. This thing is getting killed off pretty quick. It's not flooding yet. Now it is. Badly too. Yeah, good boy. But they had those really sneaky torps, right? Yeah, minus 78 visibility. Yikes. Something else problematic. Ammo. Reduced ammo for torps, reduced ammo for shells. Meaning I am about to run out of ammo on... Well, at least the Kaiser here. These other two are fine. But at 14 kilometer range, I can barely pen them as is. So I'm not going to waste any time there. There is... Ah, no! Crap, I turned right into them. Could have been worse, I could have been broadside. But this is not going to help with my maneuverability. Fortunately, I didn't hit any engine, so the, the buoyancy is going to very quickly come back up. Or it should. Maneuverability is going to be 27 knots. Which means I can barely keep up with the heavy cruisers here. Hmm. Just lost another DD. I'm definitely going to lose the D1 there. I just do not understand where that battle cruiser went. It could have been a pretty formidable fighting unit, but it just decided to run. Uh, Carl, disengage. How are the other heavies? Not great for ammo. 246, 360, and 396. Let me detect the torps. Hold on. There goes the D1. Meaning we're going to have probably one surviving destroyer. Just the D3. And these guys are all so maneuverable that any torpedo attempts are just pointless. So what's the speed of the heavies? 23, 7, 25, and 17. That's the damaged Algerie. There goes the Leica. Light cruisers. These things can do 25. And that's what they're doing. Yeah. Um... I don't want to turn this into a, a massive chase. And that's exactly what it's looking like. 
The objective, I'll restate, destroy the French battlecruisers and decimate the French Mediterranean fleet. I wonder if I can interpret this as kind of job done, considering that the French are running away. But the problem is that they still have so many ships alive. So I'm a bit torn. I'd say yes. Yes, I managed to make the French run. I inflicted definitely five times, almost six times the amount of damage that they inflicted on me. But it's not terribly convincing. Because one of their battlecruisers made it out alive. Uh, they're about to run away with three heavies and three lights. Actually more. Four, five, six, and a whole bunch of DDs. Their ammo is still good. They just refuse to fire it because they don't have that much. Hmm. A little while later, I am uh, about to finish off one of the last destroyers that I can actually hit. This is the Fougueux. Fougueux is trying to get back to her fleet, but I think she too is a victim of the formation bug. Which means that of her 37 knots, she's probably not even doing half. And because of that, she's an easy picking for the battlecruiser. It's 15 inch death coming the way of the Fougueux. The heavy cruiser wise, I have problems. Not because they're dead, but because they ran out of ammo. We got the heavy cruiser Miskolch over there. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm going to pull her off the line. Retreat. She's out of ammo. That leaves the uh, Kapfenberg. Kapfenberg still has some ammunition. And she's firing it with mixed results at the destroyer. She's one of the few heavy cruisers that actually still have ammo. The Tyrol over here, I had to retreat. Um, same for most of the ships. The Kaiser is in retreat, the De Brechen is in retreat, Tyrol is in retreat, Spalato, Villach. I just don't have the ammo. I don't have the ability to do damage against them. And that's kind of frustrating because I like this ship. I liked the, the Bismarck wannabe. I like the... Uh, <laughs> um, what was she supposed to... Yeah, the Mikolas Horti, as she was supposedly be called. Unfortunately... I have uh, neither the firepower on the heavy cruisers nor their mobility to rely on. Which means that I would have to spend very long, very, very long indeed to try to race up to the Montcalm. Which I basically can't intercept. The Montcalm is doing 24 knots. I'm doing 27. So I'm gaining 3 miles, if I'm correct. 3 miles in an hour. So let's say about two kilometers, or uh, about five kilometers in an hour range. That means that in four hours of in-game time, I get close enough to maybe inflict some damage. Maybe. Now that's a big if. The only other ship that I can still kill here is the Bambara. And the Bambara is just torpedoing a heavy cruiser. I just don't know which. Oh, Spolato is also out of ammo. This is also something that they do. These little things just keep racing around, most of the time at best speed, and um, torpedo me. And these are the sneaky ones. That's the minus 78. Considering the heavy cruisers are out of their 7-inch firepower, I cannot really do much other than hope that a 4-inch shell comes close enough to scare this thing. And that's, <laughs> that's about the extent of the damage that I can do. I still have ammo on the light cruisers, but they too are limited in speed. So their ability to catch up with the rest of the fleet is severely, severely limited. And yes, I'm spotting more of the French fleet here, but I just... I don't feel like chasing them down. So, um, with 38,000 damage done and almost 6,000 damage taken, I'm calling this a victory for the Austro-Hungarian Navy. It's not really based on the amount of kills. I haven't killed all of the stuff, hold on, that I should have killed, at least not for the scenario. Shit. Um, but I barely lost 
anything. I think I lost 4 DDs. 4 Let's see, heavy cruiser wise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Did I lose a heavy cruiser? Really? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, I went into battle with 8 heavy cruisers. That's it. I went into battle with 8 heavy cruisers. I also went into battle with 5 of my light cruisers and 5 of my destroyers. So I lost 4 destroyers in exchange for the vast majority of the French fleet. They lost heavy cruisers, battle cruisers, light cruisers, destroyers. Almost everything that went into battle uh, came out at least damaged or destroyed. So I'm calling it a victory for the Austro-Hungarian Navy, but I will leave it up to Darth Fendar to just write out how it's going to end up for the Austro-Hungarians. Because there is now potentially more of the French fleet for the next part of the scenario. We'll see how he, uh, he writes that up. If you want to send in your own scenario, you can. Link down below is a, uh, or linked in the description down below, is a link to Patreon. That's how you can become a naval architect. If you become a naval architect, you can send in a scenario. The other patrons get to vote, and the best scenarios get featured in the videos. So that's how you can get your own story out here into a video. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, let me know what you think of the video. I hope you enjoyed the design of this ship. I really like the way that she performed. And, um... Um, let's uh, say that if you made it this far into the video, which is 56 minutes in, um, write hi Horthy down <laughs> in the comment section so that people are going to go, what the hell is that about? Hi Horthy. Horthy is H-O-R-T-H-Y. Uh, All right, guys. Thanks for watching. That's it for today. I'll catch you soon for the next video.